Tedium circuits and pseudowires. Defining the tedium circuits. The customer tedium circuits must now be configured. In this solution, there are two tedium E1 circuits. One is unstructured while the other is structured, so we'll extract time slots and carry these streams of the multiplex data in a pseudowire. The unstructured circuit is connected to an E101 on router red, and the whole E1 is to be backhauled as an unframed pseudowire to E1010 on router blue using SAT op. The other circuit comprises two time slots of circuit E102 on router red to E1011 on router blue. Since we're only interested in the contents of two time slots, we use a CESO PSN pseudowire. First, since this is an ITU-based network, we configure the TDM controllers to be E1 using a card type command. If your network is ANSI based, there is an equivalent command to configure the TDM interfaces as T1. Now we configure the first E1 controller with the appropriate clocking direction. For router red, the clocking is given to the TDM device, so the clock source is internal. For router blue, the clocking comes from the TDM equipment, so the clock source is line. This controller must also be configured as unframed, since the complete TDM signal is carried over the pseudowire, framing and all. Therefore, we define a SEM group with the addition of the unframed qualifier, indicating that it's SAT op. This will create a SEM virtual device to be configured later using the SEM group number, in this case, zero. The SEM group numbers do not have to be the same at both ends, but if possible, this is a convenient convention. Now to the structured TDM circuit. In this case, we define the clocking as we have previously, the same for both the E1 controllers at each location. Now we configure the SEM group with a very important difference from the previous E1. Because we only want to backhaul two time slots, we indicate which time slots to extract for the pseudowire. Note that the time slots do not have to be the same at each end. This allows some amount of grooming of the TDM circuits. Note also that we do not use the unframed keyword, thereby indicating that this is to be a CESO PSN pseudowire with a SEM group number of 1. Again, this will create a SEM virtual device for configuration in the next steps. SAT op configurations. The SEM group commands in the previous step have created SEM virtual interfaces, in this case, those for the SAT op pseudowire. Now we need to configure each of the SEM groups which we instantiated in the previous step. We start this process by using the SEM keyword, followed by the group number specified in the previous SEM group command. Since our commands were SEM group 0 for the SAT op interface, we need to specify SEM0 here. So on router red, we define the pseudowire connecting this interface to the destination with the IP address of 10.10.0.1, .10 which is on router blue. The number 101 is a virtual circuit identifier, which we want to make sure will be unique at both ends. The encapsulation keyword indicates that the pseudowire is to be carried using MPLS. Similarly, on router blue, we configure the pseudowire connection to router red, which hosts the IP address of 10.10.0.2. Note that the virtual circuit identifier must agree at both ends. CESO PSN configurations. The process for configuring the CESO PSN pseudowires is identical to the SAT op case. As above, the SEM group command has created a SEM virtual interface. Again, we define the pseudowire using the SEM keyword, followed by the SEM group ID number. We define the CESO PSN pseudowire in much the same way as the SAT op case. Note that the virtual circuit ID is now different. It must be unique to both ends of the pseudowire, as this number tells the router which circuit is which. The IP address is that of router blue. The same process is used for the router blue, and the IP address for the remote end is the IP address of router red. 
Finally, note again that the virtual circuit IDs at each end must agree. Now our configuration is totally complete. We should now have a pair of working end-to-end pseudo-wires. Help ensure pseudo-wire working. There are a number of basic commands to make sure that the pseudo-wire is operating correctly. First, we should check the E1 attachment circuits to make sure that they're up. To confirm that the clocking is functioning correctly, we should see no slips, errors, or line code violations. Then, we look at the total number of pseudo-wires to see their status. From the output of this command, we want to see that all are in the state of up. The state that we do not want to see is DN, or down. Also, the SEM interfaces themselves should also be in the state up, up. It should be clear that the MPLS transport of the virtual circuits is functioning properly by showing the status of up. This last entry is probably the most useful command to troubleshoot any uncovered issues. This will clearly show the status of all the components in the pseudo-wire for which normal functioning should be up or active. We now have a complete end-to-end -end configuration that solves our original problem. We're successfully carrying TDM traffic over an IP MPLS pseudo-wire with packet-based timing and quas.